Good morning. My name is Joe Thermel, principal of Southwick Regional School, and welcome, finally, to the Class of 2020's graduation ceremony. If you would please join me in welcoming and honoring the fellow students who have made the selfless decision to serve our country and enlist in the armed forces. Noah Harriman, Air Force. Josh Harriman, Air Force. Devin Sheehan, Army. And Dakota Wood, Marine Corps. Ryan Cedar is a student of ours that has already enlisted in the Navy. He's at boot camp, but his mom is here at graduation with us today, so we congratulate her as well. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Arnold and Mr. Shulman and hope they're subbing for one of my classes. 
While we roamed the halls, taking laps and avoiding deadlines, we did leave a mark. We obviously dominated all tournaments, had the best entrance and spirit at pep rally, and definitely have the brains of the school. I mean, come on, we have two valedictorians. What other class can do that? And I'm fairly confident we got into the least number of accidents in the parking lot, though it's probably best we didn't have the last three months to raise those numbers. We can't stay in those same four hallways forever, and now it's time to move on to bigger things. No matter what paths we each travel and how far they take us, I have nothing but high hopes for what everyone is going to do. But if we don't keep in touch and I hear about you doing great things, I'll be proud to say I went to high school with you. I would like to thank you all for the impact you've made on me over the past four years. Thank you. At this time, please welcome to the stage co-valedictorian Riley Pruitt. Okay, so I know what you all are thinking, and just to get this out of the way, uh, yes, I am tall, uh, no, I do not play basketball, and the weather, it is actually pretty nice up here. I would like to start off by thanking our administration, staff, and my fellow classmates, and all of our friends and family for taking the time to be with us here today. The South Regional Schools Class of 2020 has come so far, not in just these past few months, but in the last 13 years that we have spent in this district together, so we are glad you are here to celebrate with us. Before I force you all to listen to me for the next few minutes, I would like to give my sincerest gratitude to our administration, faculty, and staff for making my last four years at the high school truly special. Especially in these difficult times over the past few months, your support and drive to make this time as normal as possible for all of us really means a lot. I would also like to express my appreciation to our janitors for constantly cleaning up after us, especially after pep rallies and spirit weeks, when remnants of our outfits littered the hallways and the gym floors became piles of glitter and streamers. To our teachers and the staff, thank you for putting in the effort to make those close connections with your students and really making a difference in their lives. Our school would truly be a different place without you. Also, a very sincere thank you to Google, Sparknotes, Yahoo Answers, and Wikipedia for getting us all through high school. <laughs> and for the sake of me graduating today, that is a joke. As a kid, and I think I speak for many of us, the idea of being the class of 2020 was just perfect. It seems like the year to graduate. We covered our bleachers for pep rally with 2020 vision posters and banners, with no doubt in our minds that our last few months in this district would be nothing short of perfect. Little did we all know our vision wasn't so clear, as we remained oblivious to the unforeseen challenges that lie ahead. Coming into this world in the early 2000s, life was great. The iPhone didn't exist, and we all spent time outside. The Patriots had won Super Bowl 36 and you could get a burrito from Taco Bell for 69 cents. I mean, what else could you ask for? Well, the challenges this world had in store for us started when, in first grade when silly bands were banned. <laughs> Wearing the sleeve of these shaped rubber bands was a status symbol in those simple times. They represented our different tastes and personalities, but also resulted in five, 10, and even 15 minutes of recess wasted as we fidgeted with them instead of preparing for our mad minutes. However, administration stopped us very quickly when those silly bands pro became prohibited, making my collection of hundreds I had stashed away in my closet just a worthless pile of rubber. All that money that, again, that could have been put towards college tuition was gone, just like that. A few years later, fourth grade started off as usual until winter came a little early. The nor'easter of 2011 left most of us without power for days, and worst of all, we couldn't even get our free candy on Halloween. Not only this, but we were forced into our homes with our siblings, with only board games to entertain us. Little did we all know we would be led into a similar situation years later as 2020 approached, and we would once again learn to overcome the challenges of entertaining ourselves and getting schoolwork done while being surrounded by the monsters that are siblings. The next year, we all entered middle school. We were all thrilled to get our lockers, switch rooms for different classes, and to beg our parents for money so we could use that coveted ice cream machine during lunch. 
Well, after we all got our hopes up, that ice cream machine was rolled out of the lunchroom faster than the Atlanta Falcons lost their lead during Super Bowl 51. <laughs> However, we must focus on this crisis quickly, because what lay ahead seemed even more exciting. There had been talk about the 7th and 8th grades moving up to the high school, but being a bunch of preteens, we didn't pay much attention. That was until 7th grade, getting the news that we'd leave Powder Mill after holiday break and return in a new year to the newly renovated high school. It seemed like an enjoyable experience, going into a brand new building with the same friends and classes. But then again, being the tall kid, I didn't have as much of a concern about the scary high schoolers as some of my classmates may have had. It was definitely a hard experience for all of us, having a brand new environment and suddenly becoming the youngest kids in the school building. We were able to work through the remainder of that year as a class, feeling even more unique as the first ever class to attend seventh grade in the new 7 through 12 building. It was, without a doubt, a special yet challenging year for all of us. But we still had the DC trip to look forward to, right? <laughs> Once again, the world had other plans for us. It all goes back to when the permission forms for our trip were handed out, with a strikingly higher price with this new tour company being involved. But that would be my parents' issue. I was just concerned with how many days until we left. The day of the trip came, and all was going to plan until that evening. After eating at an arcade buffet, some of us had some sort of a stomach sickness, and I'll just leave it at that. Let's just say it wasn't a good start to the trip, and quite a few of us were able to bond over something that night. The river cruise the next day would surely make us forget about this, right? Well, that's what I thought. Until we got the news that we wouldn't be able to go on the river cruise if we wanted to visit Mount Vernon. But that's okay. The $20 refund some of us received really did make up for it. Coming to school in the fall and being able to walk through the high school halls was the definition of freedom. Freshman year started with many questions. Is Mr. DeMello really leaving us for retirement in January? Does Miss Diagostino really speak Spanish? And do her children know what teddy bears are now? However, not only were we left with these questions, but with countless flies that began to invade the science hallway, turning our biology classes into flag filling competitions. Watching shoes fly to the ceiling in hopes of taking one out during a biology video turned into the new normal that year, leaving fly corpses littered across the tile floors. Beyond this, freshman year was, for many students, a year of tracking down the secure Wi-Fi password. Whether this was from upperclassmen, substitute teachers, classmates, you name it, anyone, handing to, anyone willing to hand over this key to happiness at SRS. Most students were successful, and I would like to thank those who made an effort to share this information with the others. We appreciate you. However, our administration was on top of this and knew the potential risks from students having access to this Wi-Fi. We all came in one day and seemed startled by how slow our phones were, then saddened when we finally discovered the Wi-Fi wasn't unlocking to our trusty password. This is the moment we all knew as students our phones would never work as well again. Despite this minor obstacle, we had college application season rapidly approaching. And what could make this stressful time any better than a very useful program called Naviance? Don't be fooled by its seemingly soothing name. As this comprehensive college, career, and life readiness solution left one of my classmates, you know who you are, sobbing in stress and confusion in the library as we are trained on how we plan our future with this alleged tool. Do I wish I had listened a little more when being taught how to use Naviance? Well, maybe, but I still managed to graduate and enroll in college without completing my career cluster finder. Next up, senior year. The year we waited for in anticipation the year that would be the celebration of the last 12 years of struggles and obstacles. The year we would finally walk across the stage and be left stress-free, ready to take on the rest of our lives. For us, this year was no exception to the obstacles and struggles. We lost a classmate at the start of the year, making our bond and love for each other even stronger. Our fall sports teams were faced with the losses of night games to Triple E. Coronavirus destroyed the spring sports season taking it away in its entirety. It didn't stop there, attacking our senior year and robbing us of our traditional sign-out, picnic, banquet, and the cap-and-gown photos with our closest friends. Class of 2020, we haven't had it easy in the slightest. 
and we've run into countless obstacles, small and large. We are the first class to experience grades 7 through 12 in this building. The first class to face the challenges of the revamped DC trip. The first class to graduate in this decade. The first class with two valedictorians. And the first class to lose many of the best parts of high school. But there is one thing in common with all these challenges. We came through them as a stronger, more unique class. We were thrown into the high school for the first time in the middle of seventh grade, and our high school career ended on Friday, March 13th. We were faced with challenges and smaller inconveniences along the way, but look at us. We are all here together celebrating our success. Despite our visions of a perfect journey together, challenges later made themselves apparent. Throughout our lives, no matter how we see ourselves at this moment, the world will continue to throw challenges and obstacles at the class of 2020 that our 2020 vision failed to show. The only thing I ask of you all, class of 2020, is that you continue to fight. When we walk across the stage today, diploma in hand, just know we have all fought through a storm to get here, and every last one of us deserves it. Whether it was being buried by snow, let down by the loss of an ice cream machine, or having our senior year pulled away, we were able to persevere and bring ourselves out on top. It's been an absolute pleasure growing up with all of you, and I couldn't ask for a better class to be standing up in front of today. Class of 2020, be crap, because we did it. Thank you. Cole Valley Victorian, Evelyn Shainfall. Good morning, graduates, members of administration, faculty, and family. My name is Evelyn Shainfall, and I am one of the two valedictorians of the Southwick Regional Class of 2020. How fitting for such an unprecedented time. I will be attending the George Washington University in D Washington, D.C. for political science and Spanish. Before I start rambling, I would like to take a moment to thank Mr. Turmel, Ms. Shorter, Mr. Pescatelli, and Superintendent Willard, and especially our class advisors, Ms. Hitchcock and Mrs. Pomeroy, for making the final months of her senior year as special as possible given the circumstances. They organized a senior parade, put up pictures of all of us on the fence for the town to see as they drove by and understood the importance of an in-person graduation ceremony. I would also like to thank a few teachers who have heavily impacted who I grew to be and who pushed me to be where I am today. Special shout outs to Mrs. Moriarty, Mrs. Rivera, Mrs. Lukensky, um, Ms. Mahoney, Mrs. Hall, Mr. Trasco, and Mr. LeBlanc. If you had told me three years ago, when I was sitting in the choir section of the 2017 graduation ceremony, that my class would not have a traditional graduation, <laughs> um, I would not have believed you. When I was a freshman, I looked up to the seniors. They were grown, they had their futures planned out, they got to experience senior pranks, senior picnic, and senior banquet. Everything that a lot of graduates look forward to. Classic Southwick traditions. But as I stand here today, I realize that seniors always look, up, look grown up and knowledgeable. A lot don't have their lives figured out. We can't even plan for the future. Everything is uncertain. The 2019-2020 school year brought a lot of challenges and twists to the students of Southwick Regional School. A month into the school year, we experienced the loss of one of our classmates, Ms. Arta Koch. The day after this tragedy, the seniors split into separate groups with our guidance counselors to discuss our feelings and emotions towards the event. Many remembered that he most looked forward to the senior events at the end of the year. Although I didn't know Ms. R personally, I felt uplifted and inspired to organize and attend the events we have always associated with the second semester. Unfortunately, we were not able to do it all, but we did our best. We planned unconventional events, and I know he would have been there if he could. Unconventional is the perfect word to describe our academic experience in Southwick. Every step of the way, there was a change. In fifth grade, I remember being angry that Powder Mo removed the ice cream machine from the cafeteria the year before we would be able to use it. Silly, I know, but a valid complaint at the time. We became the first seventh grade class to ever attend the high school and the first seventh grade class to participate on high school sports teams and in the drama productions. For the eighth grade Washington DC trip, we went through a different travel company. 
It was more expensive and different in every way than we were told from previous years. This year, our senior year abruptly ended a little more than halfway through. No proper goodbyes to friends and teachers who shaped who we are today. There's no way to completely remedy what we lost. But despite this, the school did their best to recognize our hard work and achievements. Our faces were posted along the fence, the town came up to support us during the senior drive around, they adopted us, and the school handed out handmade masks at senior sign out. So thank you for that. All of these things, one challenge at a time, have made us who we are. Even though I called our academic experience in Southwick unconventional, the word I would describe, to, would describe our class as is resilient. We are resilient because we make the best out of awful, surprising situations. Every step of the way, we have adapted to the new normal. We accepted the fact that our final term of high school was online, and we settled for Zoom calls and FaceTimes with our friends. It has prepared us for the truth that is life. Everything that seems secured and promised might not happen. You can be mournful and heartbroken at the time, but eventually you must pick yourself back up and continue on with the wild ride that is life. Despite all the classes I've learned, at, I've taken at Southwick, the biggest lesson I've learned is about the unexpectedness of it. Enjoy and experience as much as you can while you can. YOLO, am I right? Yes, I'm bringing back the word that we've all locked um, in the deepest depths of our memory from high school. As I stand here, we are all destined for unique paths. Whether that path be medicine, science, English or politics, music, engineering, or education. Some of those graduating in the, some of those graduating in the class of 2020 destined for the military have already left for training. Whatever your path is, pursue it with passion and excitement. Expect the unexpected, plan for the unexpected, and endure the unexpected. Make the best of the rest of your life wherever it brings you. Take what this year's taught you and apply it to the future. Congratulations to all of my fellow graduates, the class of 2020. We are strong and we are powerful. <laughs> Thank you. I welcome to the stage Mrs. Schroeder and Mr. Pascatelli to present the Emerald Shield Awards. The Emerald Shield Award is the highest honor that can be bestowed upon a faculty member or student at Southwick Regional School. The names of Emerald Shield um, honorees are inscribed on a perpetual plaque hanging in the main hallway of the school. Emerald Shield recognizes individuals who have made significant contributions that make our school a better place. Acclaimed by a vote of the senior class as the teacher who has had the greatest impact on the members of the senior class over the last four years, the class of 2020 recognizes Mrs. Amy Pomeroy as the Alexander Prue Emerald Cheer Teacher of the Year. Good morning, everybody. Students are nominated for the Emerald Shield, first by teachers and then by the senior class votes, for the student awardee from among three finalists. The three finalists this year were Brené Elward, Robert Belanger, and Abby Buschauer. This award is given annually to the member of the graduating class who has made the greatest contribution to Southwick Regional School in the opinion of faculty and the senior class. The awardee of the Alexander Pru Emerald Shield Scholarship is Abby Buschauer. Yeah. I would now like to bring up Brenna Elward. It is my pleasure to recognize one more teacher before we leave the Southwick Regional Campus one final time. 
This teacher has been in the district for 33 years as a teacher and department head of the technology department. He has spent a career teaching students the nuances of creating graphics, home maintenance projects, engineering models, driving school, and how to change a tire. You could always find this teacher in the cafeteria monitoring their lunch. He would always walk around the cafeteria sharing his french fries or hash browns with students. He never failed to have a couple bucks in his pocket to buy a hungry student lunch. If there was an assembly, guest speaker, concert, awards night, or graduation, Mr. Ash was the person behind the scenes putting it all together. After 33 years at Southwick Regional School, this is Mr. Ash's last graduation. His presence, knowledge, kindness, sincerity, and love for his students will be truly missed. Mr. Ash, on behalf of the class of 2020, thank you for your years of service to the students of Southwick, Tallinn, and Granville. Please join me on the stage to accept your gift. Secretary of the Class of 2020, and I'm here to present the class gift. This year, we chose to purchase this bench before you in, to commemorate the life of Nazar Takach, who was a well-known member of this class. The bench will be placed on school campus and will be surrounded by landscaping, also donated by the class. Thank you. I would now like to invite all the officers to present the gifts to the class advisors. We want to thank our advisors, Ms. Hitchcock and Ms. Pomeroy, for all their hard work and dedication over the past four years. Some heroes wear capes, while others have calculators, wit, and grace. Without their help, our class would not have been successful as it was. Their constant guidance and support was invaluable. Thank you. Before I begin with the presentations of diplomas, I want to take the senior class back to a meeting we had in February, and it should explain the diamond that's on your seat right now. I love college sports, the ESPN college game days on Saturday morning, the stories, the interviews, the traditions, I think they're great. The University of Minnesota football coach is well known as a great motivator, and there was a segment on him in one of his pregame speeches about diamonds and I immediately knew that it was inspiration for our graduation speech this year. However, in February, when I put this plan in place, you did not really cooperate with my idea. If you remember, just before we left for February vacation, as a senior class, we met in the auditorium, and I asked you to answer one question for me on that half sheet of pink colored paper. And that question was, what pressures are you feeling as you enter your final semester of high school? And there were three lines, and you guys were great. You all took some time, you talked about it, you pondered it, and completed it, and the class meeting ended, and off to vacation we all went. I came in on the Tuesday of February break to read your responses and to categorize them and begin thinking about this day, this speech to you. I was envisioning responses to reflect the pressures of getting into your top choice of college, the pressures to pay for college, finding a job, completing your CTEC hours, the pressure to get a score of a four or a five on an AP test, maybe some social emotional pressures of leaving your family or friends or significant other that you've dated on again, off again, on again, and forever. <laughs> I got nothing like that. The overwhelming pressure that you all felt in February was to simply graduate. Are you kidding me? Simply graduate. This is not a pressure. This is an expectation of us. I was deflated. I threw the pink colored sheets out and I would revisit this graduation at a later date. A few weeks later, our school year turned upside down. We're canceled for our first, few, our 
were canceled for a few weeks. And at first, you guys were loving it. No school, limited work. You did not have to make up the days at the end of the year. Then third quarter, report cards came out. Grades weren't so great. I got a couple of emails from some of you concerned about grades and credits and graduation. A little pressure started to build. Your trip to Spain was going to be postponed. A couple meetings, emails concerned about money, flights, and refunds. A little more pressure started to build. Then the constant emails and phone calls, Blackboard Connect messages from your teachers and your guidance counselors and your principal about progress reports and grading and potential failures and prom cancellations and graduation moved and college campuses closed. The emails from you were flowing in and the pressures were mounting. Now you guys had a lot to write down on that little pink piece of paper. The message, the connection, I wanted to present to you when I started this in February is this. There are two main components in creating diamonds. An immense amount of pressure and an immense amount of heat. You all have absorbed an immense amount of pressure over the last few months. Pressures that no graduating class has had to endure, not only as students, but as citizens in recent memory. And with my brilliant decision to move graduation exactly in the middle of summer, you are experiencing a significant amount of heat right now. With the combination of your pressures and this heat, the graduation ceremony for the class of 2020, let me start that again. With the combination of your pressures and this heat, the graduation ceremony for the class of 2020 is going to produce 113 diamonds today. Each one of you. Each one of you is unique and rare and precious and shiny and valuable. I want you to take that 13 cent plastic diamond on your chair and put it somewhere special. And when the pressure is on, remember, the world needs diamonds, and you are one of them. On behalf, on behalf of the teachers and Mr. Pescatelli and Ms. Shorter, we wish you all the best and take care of each other. Thank you. At this time, it is my pleasure to begin the presentation of the graduates and their diplomas. Thomas Jeffrey Wheeler. <laughs> Emily Elizabeth Martin. Lauren Elizabeth Hauser. <laughs> Chloe Paige Burrell. <laughs> Ryan Mark Laferrier. Dominic Batista Versalone. <laughs> Nicholas Edward Spagnolo. <laughs> Lauren Elizabeth Sussman. Sean Thomas Mackenzie Sear. Xander Allen Fox. Zachary Parker Paul. Kaylin Marie Lanier. Yeah, 
Samantha Lynn Morin. Jacob Christopher Haddad. Nathan James Gerard. Noah James Jove. Evan Patrick Clark. Cade Thomas Billings. David Stephen Ziba. Christina Marie Piazza. Kaylee Faith Marguerite Ellsworth. Caroline Eileen Hess. Isabel Iris Belial. Anna Elizabeth Carr. <laughs> Emilio Pellegrino Colucci. <laughs> Joshua Keith Harriman. Brenna Rose Un Alward. Katerina Maria Kavarakis. Kathleen Megan Shea. Julia Diane Gardner. Ariana Marie Wally. Callie Caroline Case. Shannon Elizabeth Cassidy. Sarah Elizabeth Lepak. Nicholas Michael Green. Benjamin Connor Cleland. Cameron John Rockbank. Noah Michael Zayner. Joshua William Liss. <laughs> Daniel Ryan Burnett.
Mary Grace Dugan. Dennis Viktorovich Protzen. Jordan Elizabeth Demian. Emil Imani Murphy. Joshua Daniel Wackerbarth. Jason Carl White. Anastasia Andrevna Antropova. Jamie Marie Gallant. Ryan James Borbeau. Zachary Gage Lapointe. Noah Armand Stevenson. Andrew Robert Brown. Alexandra Mary Elizabeth Grimaldi. Kayla Ann Pudlow. Reese Elizabeth Kucher. Robert David Boulanger. Ronald Pari Hocha. Sean Patrick Moyarty. Devin Roderick Sheehan. Parker Daniel Nawin. Elise Marie Hepburn. Nicholas Adam Lafayette. Amanda Marie Kerr. Frank James Winglars. Joshua, Joshua Michael Sutton.
Nicholas Joseph Brown. Nicholas Stephen Enzyme. Ryan Patrick Molta. Zachary Andrew Koretka. Isabella May Lorraine Lombardi. Stephanie Marie Marcel. <laughs> Jennifer Don Motsko. Arden Marie Masoya. Jonathan Robert Backus. <laughs> Marissa Jacqueline Longy. Alex Matthew Rudzik. <laughs> Noah Richard Harriman. Claire Elizabeth Stratton. Ariana Marie Kimball. <laughs> Isabella Nicole Poulitz. <laughs> Tessa Rose Bonatakis. Maura Riley Worcester. <laughs> Savannah Blue Ledoux. Savannah Elaine Weston. Vanessa Catherine Levite. <laughs> Jacob Elliot Rytrowski. <laughs> Dakota James Wood. Aiden Michael Maple. Hunter Charles Montgomery.
Joshua Michael Rangi. Dalton John Bissett. Gina Nicole Piazza. Corey Ethan Crane. Faith Marie DeGreg. Madison Olivia Rose. Adam David Morse. Cameron James Collins. Alina Adrivna Antropova. Gabrielle Rena Lynn. Marino Nicholas Michael Canizaro. Jeremy John Lamoro. Miles Benjamin Reed. Tucker James Costello. Class officer, Anna Emily Blumenthal. <laughs> Class president, Gabrielle Anna Poole. Third in her class, Abby May Huschauer. <laughs> Co valedictorian, Riley Christian Pruitt. Lastly, but not least at all, our co-valedictorian, Evelyn Renee Schoenthal. I present you the graduating class of 2020.
My pleasure to welcome the class president, Gabrielle Bull, for our closing remarks. What if? This has been the question that has single-handedly decided many aspects of my future. The fear of the unknown and my inability to face failure and to accept mistakes. It has come to my attention that I have become the sidekick of my very own story. When we have one life to live in love, a fact this class has faced and witnessed, it is crucial that you play the main character in your own book. The what-ifs are hurdles, obstacles to overcome in order to reach a higher potential. What if you fall? What if it's not the right choice? But what if you take the jump, the leap from what is known to what is uncharted? This year alone, we have all faced a world pandemic. One that is ongoing, frightful, and rather unknown. For a period, time did nearly turn to stone. Life as we knew it froze, and the question of what if turned to what now. The very future stood at a standstill, a crossroad between then and now. Then, I was so unsure of my decisions and myself. I have been the class president all four years of high school. You would think the job has made me a rather confident person. But at 18, the role is everyone's to take and mold, to jump at opportunities, and to make discoveries. Upon crossing that line from childhood to adulthood, there is the undeniable feeling that this is it, and I'm not ready. I was stuck, so I thought back to a time in which my brother and I talked about cars. Yeah. He told me how important it was to experience, just once, what it was to floor it in the middle of nowhere. Now I can tell you that freedom is not invincibility. It's blurred by the dirt of life and a taste of a well-oiled machine. Fast, messy, but undoubtedly free was the fall from then to now. When you hit 120 miles per hour, the only way to slow down is if you're hitting the brakes. Don't. There comes a time for slow and deliberate, but today is for those who dove head first, took risks when they felt unsure, and got to the finish line. The ones who didn't turn back, even when the inevitable crash came. Take your time to celebrate and to think of all the amazing things you accomplished, from the time you learned to tear out your shoes to the day you scored your first varsity goal, back to when your mom first put you on the bus, crying and hysterical, to when you got your own car and managed to run to the parking lot first to get down to the hill at 211. From taking the MCAS to voluntarily doing the SATs and the APs. From double dating on swing sets to the actual mess of, you know, boyfriends and girlfriends. To meeting the first teacher who made you fall in love with reading, writing, math, or science. To the mentors, parents, and friends who got us here today. To all the tears shed, the laughs held, and the fists raised in triumph. Acknowledge and remember them all, for these things are what made up your life for the last 12 years. As Nathan Scott said, it's the oldest story in the world. One day you're 17 and you're planning for someday, and then quietly, without you ever really noticing, someday is today, and that someday is yesterday, and this is your life. So take today, enjoy the view, and then get back in your car and floor it, because there's so much more ahead and nothing to be put on pause. Graduates, would you please rise? It is time to turn your tassel from the right to the left. I got her stolen. Without further ado, it is my honor to present to you all the graduates of the South Regional School Class of 2020.